I'm going to start by creating the server socket. So for that, I'm going to use the man page for socket. I'm going to start by including this include file we need over here, syssocket.h. Then I'm going to open the main function. Let's see what, what I need to pass into the domain argument here. So I'm just going to search it here for a sec. Let's use afinet since this one stands for IPv4. That's the protocol that we're going to use. Next parameter is going to be type. So I'm going to search for that here in the man page. And I'm going to use sock stream, which is going to be just a regular TCP socket. Finally, for last parameter or protocol, I can just pass in zero, which will use the default protocol. And this will return the socket. So I'm going to save this into sock FD. FD stands for file descriptor. And this basically is the handle for the socket. Second function I want to call is called bind. This will actually bind the socket to a certain address so it can actually start listening on it. Let's open the man page for that. First parameter is going to be the socket file descriptor. Afterwards, we pass in a pointer to a structure that is called sock address. So I'm going to open the man page for this. And I'm going to scroll a little down here. I'm going to use the specific IN one. IN stands for internet. First one, I'm just going to use AFINet as is suggested over here. Afterwards, port number. For this, I'm going to use the HTones function. I'm going to show you the documentation for that. And the reason we need to use this function to actually pass in the port is that in a lot of cases, your computer and the socket API actually order bytes differently. And this function can basically be used to handle the conversion if it's needed. And in a lot of cases, it is needed. I'm going to use port 99909. Last parameter is going to be the address. I'm just going to put this as zero. So it'll connect to my local machine. Now let's go back to bind function. Now I'm going to pass the address into the function. Last parameter is going to be the size of the structure. After bind, I'm going to use the listen function. And this will actually prepare the socket for listening for connections. It's pretty simple. You just pass in the socket file descriptor and a backlog number. And for this parameter, you can basically choose whatever you want. I'll just open up this parameter in the docs here for a sec. And you can see that it defines the maximum length to which the queue of pending connections may grow. I'm just going to hard code this as 10. By the way, this is a good point to remind that this code is just for fun and it's definitely not going to be suitable for production. I'm going to skip a lot of error checking and cleanups. If you want some tips on error handling, I have a video specifically on that, so you should definitely check it out. After listen, I'm finally going to call accept, and this will actually accept connections from the clients. First parameter is going to be the socket file descriptor. Afterwards, the two second parameters can be null. This will just give us back the address if we want the address of the client. I'm not interested, so I'm going to pass null for both. If everything is successful, this will just return the client file descriptor. After I accept the client connection on the server, I need to do two tasks. First one is going to be to print everything that the client is sending me. So if the client is sending me a chat message, the server will print it. And second thing I want to do is actually enable the person that is running the server to send messages back to the client. And I want to do two of those in parallel. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a function that is called poll. So I'm going to open the man page for that. And you can see that this function basically enables me to wait on file descriptors. And the cool thing about this function is that I can pass in an array of file descriptors, and I'll just return whenever one of them is ready. Important point before we continue on is that to get input from the user, I'm going to use the std in file descriptor, which is always going to be file descriptor zero. Now let's go ahead and actually call this function. First parameter for pull is going to be an array of pull fd structures. Let's take a look at how this looks like.
I'm going to need two of these structures because I'm going to listen first of all on SCDM and second of all, I'm going to listen on the client file descriptor to see if there's any messages coming from the client. First one is going to be SCDM, so file descriptor is going to be zero. Afterwards, the events I'm interested in. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see how it talks about the events, that it's a bit mask specifying the events the application is interested. I'm basically interested to see if there's anything ready to be read from SCDN. So I'm just, just going to scroll down a little bit. And this is the option I'm interested in using. It's called pull in. And this means that there is data to be read. Last thing in the structure is going to be called R events. This is returned events. And I can just keep this as zero because this will actually be returned after the poll finished. Now I'm going to fill the second array member. This is going to be another stru structure like this. File descriptor is going to be, in this case, client file descriptor. This will again be pull in because I want to see if there's anything ready to be read from the client. And zero again in the last parameter because this will be filled by pull function. Now let's go back to the signature of this function. And now I can pass in the structure. By the way, let's give it a name. Forgot to give it a name. Second parameter is number of file descriptors. This will be two and timeout. Let's say, for example, let's give it like 50,000. Yeah, timeout is going to be the number of milliseconds. So let's just give it like 50,000 milliseconds. After pull finished, let's go ahead and check the array of the structures. Let's start by checking the first file descriptor. Specifically, now I'm going to use the R events. This is the return events. I'm going to see if there's anything new. Notice I'm using the bit operation of AND. And it's just a way to check if our events includes the pull in event. If the first file descriptor includes this, I know that SCDN is ready, and I can use the read system call to actually read from SCDN. By the way, let's define a buffer here. Just make it 256 bytes. Now I'm going to open the read system call. File descriptor, first parameter, afterwards buffer. Finally count, I'm just going to read 255 bytes. After I finish reading over here, I'm just going to send this back to the client. And open the send man page. I'm going to send the buffer. Let's send 255. Flags can be just zero. No additional flags needed. Afterwards, I'm going to add an else if here. I'm going to check the next file descriptor. And if this one is true, this means that there's something that is ready to be read from the client. And in this case, I need to receive from the client socket. And afterwards, I'm going to print it. I'm going to print the buffer. Now all I got to do is just put this in a for loop. I'm going to add a couple of includes here. That's the I.O. for the printf. Also, there's another include I need to add for htones. Now let's go ahead and write the client code. And for the client, I'm actually going to base upon the server code. So I'm going to use save as. Just call it chat client. 
I'm going to use the same address structure. Instead of bind, I'm going to delete this and also this. I'm going to use the connect call. I'm going to open the man page for that. And after connect, I can just delete accept here and again use the poll. And this will actually work very similarly. So I'm just going to leave all this logic as is and I'm going to save this. I'm going to start by compiling and running the server. I'm going to use for this make chat server without .c. It's going to automatically recognize that it needs to compile the C file. We see that we have a couple of errors here. I'm just going to fix them real quick. It's supposed to be address. We're missing another include file here. Let's just fix it real quick. Pull.h. Let's fix it in the client as well. Try building it right now. Also, I need to include another include file for the read system call. It's going to be uniSTD. Okay, this is good. I'm, I'm going to ignore this warning. It's just talking about incompatible pointers. That's fine with me. It's still going to work. I'm going to first build the client with make chat client. Let's fix this error for a sec. Fixing this to be socket file descriptor. Also over here. One last thing I want to add is I want to add a check if receive actually receive nothing and in that case I want to exit the program and this is just to fix some infinite loop that can occur let's go to the return section of receive as you can see if everything is successful these calls just return the number of bytes received so in this case I'm just going to actually check if receive got zero bytes in that case, I'm just going to ret return from the program. I'm going to do the same thing in the server. Let's go ahead and build both. Now let's go ahead and run the server and the client. I'm going to start by running the server. Now the client. As you can see, when I type something on the client, it is received on the server. And when I go ahead and type something on the server, it is received on the client. Notice, by the way, that sometimes if you run the server again, it'll fail. And if you want more information without going ahead and running and adding error handling in your code, you can just use Ltrace. So let's go ahead and just run this with Ltrace. And as you can see in this case, we can see that bind has failed. The reason for that is sometimes the socket is not cleaned up yet. And so you have to wait a little before running it again. You can see, by the way, that bind has failed because when you look at this line, you can see that it returned minus one. If you look at the man page of bind, you can see that minus one is the failure. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.